Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Three Years Life Church. Today is another Sunday that we experience God's goodness and mercy. This will be our 10th since we start the online service. And I believe God is doing something, doing something great in your lives. It's my honor and privilege to share to you the Word of God this morning. May I request you to please stand up in the reverence of the Word of the Lord. The Word of the Lord is found that we're going to share this morning is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 21. Actually, the entire chapter, but for the sake of time, we'll read verse 1 up to 4 only. It says, Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then the report back to me so that I may know how many there are. The Job replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over, over. My Lord, the King, are they not all my Lord's subject? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should we bring guilt on his right? Take note of the first, verse 4. The King's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel, and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel, there were 1,100,000 men who could handle the sword, including the 470,000 in Judah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Lord, today we are here and we give you praise, Lord. Again, it's our opportunity, God, to open our hearts and minds as we in tune to you. We pray, God, that you would minister your people in whatever situations we have right now. May your word minister your people. I pray, God, that the word that we're going to take this morning would bring life, hope, encouragement, and even review every one of us so that we can be a great people of you. We thank you, Mary, in Jesus' name we pray. Chronicles is a book of history. Some of these chapters recorded the significant victories of Israel during the time of the leadership of David. But on the other hand, there were records in the Bible also that focuses on some failures and mistakes of David being a leader. So that, so that every one of us, as we serve the Lord, we can avoid the same failure as what those people did during this time during their time. So this morning, I know we have a lot of troubles, you know, confusions, especially this pandemic issues that we've been facing. facing. You know, karon nag-ibog na, unsa man yun, ECQ, GCQ, MGCQ, or unsa man yun, unsa may diferensya, unsa may kalibgan, and uh, people are confused, and Somehow, we overreact to the situations, and there are tendencies that, being an impulsive person, we tend to decide things without consulting the Word of God. This morning, I'd like to share to you the title that I'm going to share to you this morning is entitled, When Failure Comes. Failure is inevitable, inevitable. 
ang ang pakyas, ang kapakyasan dili nato malikayan. But there, there are things that we need to consider when we commit mistakes. God is able to keep us from falling, as what the scripture says. However, if we fail, God's grace is available. Well, you know, when you, when you look at this chapter that we read a while ago, when you read the preceding chapter of this, the people of ang mga katawa ni David were so hyped up with their victories. You know, right after David defeated the giant Goliath, all of his people somehow like murag nakagain sila of confidence, nakagain sila of kumpiensa, sila ang kaugalingon na medyo galingon na lang nilang patay ang mga higante Nga ilang gikaaway, right, that happened right after David defeated Goliath. Well, in fact, when you check the other, the other, the cross reference out of this is that there were times David resting in his place. Niinom si David nga pagkalamig, niinom ang tubig niya itong atawin nga naasa. Campus ng ultra. Wala niya ki instruct, but these brave warriors sneak out. Sa tanang mga sundalo ngayon yung nakaaway ng ilang diagian, ilang ipamatay, ano lang makakuha ang tupig dito sa atapay ng sa tumak sa camp sa ilang nakaaway. Pagbalik nila, nagdala sila sa tupig pero punok sa dugo. Those people are brave and loyal to David. But for some instance, there were times in his leadership in the city of David. And one of that is found in chapter 13 of the same book that we read. Chapter 13 talks about David up to his history. He'd like to book the Ark of the Covenant without any consulting the word of the Lord. The Lord was so angry with David. Jump up to the scriptures or to this chapter, chapter 21. Again, another mistake David does. Verse 21. Sa laing version nga ni Minun siya, and David instructed to have a census for his people. But this in IV version that I like to read is, says in verse 1. So Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census. So David said to Joab, and the commanders of the troops go and count the Israels from Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Is it wrong to do a census? Why the Lord is so angry? 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 Why the Lord Ang iyang mga sundalo. That question is running out in my mind for this few weeks. And in fact, I, I asked some people out of this. But the Lord gave me a revelation. David, who made mistakes of doing that. Why? Because it's found in Exodus chapter 30. Verse 11 to 16. The Lord himself told the Israelites or even Moses to do something about when you do a census. Verse 11. 
And the Lord said to Moses, When you take utensils, all the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord's, the Lord, a ransom. Take note the word, ransom. Then balikan tamonya later on. He says, when you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life, for his life at a time he is counted. The new plagues will come on them when you number them. Each one of you who crosses over those already counted is to give half of a shekel according to the sanctuary's shekel. When failure comes, there are remedy out of this. What happened? that makes David to commit a mistake. Number one, Satan knows how to incite David. You know what Satan did? Number one, he hype up David's pride. Number one, boastfulness and pride. You know, there's a scriptures in the Bible that says, Pride comes before, come, uh, pride comes first before the fall. Why pride? Why pride? Because, you know, ko ang mga butang atong bantayan sa, sa atong tinaguli. Kung gikan ka sa significant victories, pride will come. Of course, bakura silang nakapatay ng mga iganti before underdog kayo sila, nakadog kayo sila sa, sa sitwasyon o sa ilang mga punta. But later on, after David experienced the breakthrough, sa yun sa yun, na lang nilang patay ng mga iganti, even ang iso ni David, kung yung i-check ang, ang historical books, even ang mga iso ni David, sa yun sa, sa, yun, sa yun na lang mapatay ng mga iganti. In fact, it's been recorded in the Bible, Nga ang iso ni David nakapatay ang dako kay ni or mas dako pa ni Goliath ni Eganti. And because of that significant victory, David think that they can manage to defeat their enemies just for their own self. They make account of soldiers because that day, war is a number game. Ang gubat nito panahuna, para hindi tao kino nila karon ang gubat dili na para hindi tao para ganay ng virus. You know, pero sa panahon ni David, when you have the people you have the victory. During the Iyana time, as, as, as king, the number of people is a very important for them. It's for them to figure it out before they decide to engage a war. So with the, with, with the intention in his heart na mahibawaan niya kung pila ka mga tao before siya mapil sa gubat. But do na siya nakalimutan mga ito. Kaniyang nakalimutan ni Mao nga. Ingun yung mga kristuhan before tamo, hino of major decisions sa ato nga kinabuhi. It's not our resources. Ngunit ito ang basihan. It's not the people that we have. Ngunit ito ang basihan. It must be the scriptures. Ang atong pangutan na muna is this the will of God for us? Not the opportunity. Not the circumstances will define our decisions or even basis of our decisions, but it always be the word of the Lord. It was their first time to gather like these numbers of people who became their warriors. Munang dunay tendency nga 
they rely to the number of people that they have. Failure always comes. Mga pagsulay, ang sipyat na kanunay, what causes us to make failures? Number one, boastfulness and pride. What causes David to do that? It's because they experience a significant victory. Number two, what did David do? Number one, it's not just a boastfulness and pride, but number two, blatant disobedient. Tinuyo na sipya. Now, let's go back to Exodus chapter 30, verse 11 to 16. What the Bible says, I've been, I've been reading this a while ago, but let me emphasize, re-emphasize it to you. When the Lord said to Moses, when you take a census of Israelites to count on them, each one must pay the Lord's ransom. The word ransom, ang pulong ransom, is a, is a payment to somebody who is captured. Now, take note of this. Christ is our ransom. Gitan only. Now, I'd like you, I'd like to point you to Christ this morning. Now, it, 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 there is a simple, there is a, a, a what, what we call this one in, in, in theology. Do they, do they picture ni Cristo na nakita din ni sa act na gibuhat, na gibabuhat ni, ni, ni Lord, ni Moses? Iyon siya, kung mag-ihap ka sa mga katawahan, ang mga katawahan magbayad alam sa Diyos at a look at or ransom each one of them should be maunay gibayole ni David you know pumunta na ito sa old sa New Testament Christ is our ransom si Kristo mo ang look at ang lang ka nato na ulipon sa pagpakasara si Kristo mo ang naglook at mo ang gihimong look at alam ka na ito. Usa ka mistake ni David na nahimo niya tuod kay iyang gikalimtan sa pagpa payad o look at ang mga katawahan na iyang gihimbog sa sensus. And that's a blatant disobedience before the Lord. Being a king, he knows that. Being a soldier, he knows that. Well, in fact, Joab tried to question the decision of David. When you check the verse 3, I think, but Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's subjects? Why does my Lord want to do this? Iyon pagin si, si Job. Why should he bring guilt to Israel? Nakabalot si Job. Now when he do, when, 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 when Israelite will do this and they will not honor the instructions of God to pay for the for that, for that payment, then they violated the instruction of God. You know, the violation of the word cannot be tolerated by God. Even his most choice servant, David, he will not tolerate it. If we will do this, if we violate the word of the Lord, the result will not be as pleasant as you expect. As a king, he, he knows what it takes to violate the word of the Lord. Even yung mga Christuanon, dapat atong i-adhere, dapat atong i-honor, dapat atong i-respect ang word of God. Dapat ang mga sitwasyon sa atong kinabuhi na naghimot ng tao, decision sa atong ang kaudalingon without even 
consulting the Word of God. Let me emphasize this. Whenever we make a major decisions in our life, let's consult the Word of the Lord. Don't be hyped up by your past victory. Don't be hyped up by the upcoming opportunities. But instead, let's consult the Word of the Lord. What I like, David, I like David, David because whenever he sensed that he commit mistakes before the Lord, David right away will come to repentance. What did David does? He admitted that he commit sin. In verse 8 of the same chapter 21 said, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now, I beg you, to take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. The Lord said to God, David, seer, go and tell David, this is what the Lord says, I am giving you three options to choose. One of them for me to carry out against you. So God, verse 11, went to David, and said to him, this is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine. Three months of being swept away by your enemies with their swords. Or three days of sword of the Lord. The days of plague in the land with the angel of the Lord ravaging every people of Israel. Now, then, Decide, and I should answer the one who sent me. Verse 13, in the camp of Agni David. David said to God, I am deep distressed. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. Sa panahon sa sipya, si David, being a leader, he accepted the full responsibilities of his decision. Being a leader, sa panahon ng masit yata, yun ay mga tao na finger pointing, blaming game ang buhaton. Kung masit yata sila sila mga decision, ilang ipamahid sila mga subordinates, ilang ipamahid sila mga tao na naas sila hanggang sa puder ng mga hugas sila sila ang sa ilahang kamot, ngawa sila ilabot yan ang desisyon, o iya-iya lang to. Pero nini yung panahon na si David sa iyang pagka-leader, nagpakita sa iyang pagka-leader, na responsible siya sa iyang desisyon. My question this morning is, how responsible are you in your decision making? Doon ay mga tao, Nga maayo lang mo ang kun sa himaya o dungog sa panahon sa kadaugan. Pero sa panahon sa sipya, manghunaw sila ang kanya. Dapat dilihin mo namin, mga Diyos. Na kung kita makahino o sayot ng desisyon, atong ang kun, hingon ko si David, ginoo, tantama ang imong silot sa mga katawan. Ako, ang pahampangyo, ang tibok na akong pamilya. They were just plain check. Karnilo lamang sila, huwag wala sila yung nabuhat ng dakotan. Ako ang pahamtangi, Ginoo. Gito ba sa Ginoo? Tulog ang butang ng piliyon. Una, piliyon ba rin mo, nga doon ay tulog, katuig, nagkagutong sa tibok Israel, tungkol sa musipya. Number two, tulog ka buwan ng pindi, kung mo kanunan sa iyong kaaway, o ikatulog, lo ka adlaw nga kamatay na ako mismo ang pahamtang sa imong mga katawan. I think this is the best decisions David made. Nga naman, minigong siya. Kung mamatay na malang ganito, piliun na ko ng mamatay ko diha sa sapakan sa iyo. You know, if the Lord saves, if the Lord Redeem, 
Why can't we choose dying in the hands of God? That's the best decisions David does in his life. During sa pag-execute sa mong, mong pleads, even ang Bible, there were seven, approximately, there were 700,000 people dying in just three days. Dili ko mo ng kining pandemic, gikan si Gino. But if resound it in your heart, why can't we go in the hands of God and asking Him, Lord, have mercy on us. He accept the full responsibilities. And after that, the Lord have mercy on His people. He withdraw His angels. Ang nindot niyo respond? After the Lord showed mercy to His people, David built an altar. Built an altar for him to commune with God, the God that he insulted, the God that he wronged. David come to the Lord with the intention of communing him as his maker. May mga tao nga, sa panahon sila, si Pierre, papalayo, ay noon si Gino. Doon ay mga tao, na pinas sa leadership, na kung kabaw sila, sila yung si Pierre, sila may muhawa. Pero dili mo ang ibuhat ni David. But instead, what David does, he himself, climbed in the mountain, built an altar for the Lord, even in your failure, God wants to commune with you. That's why in verse 23 and 24, David says, Pagsaka niya sa bukid, dun ay tao nga, yung yuta, niingon siya. Kining imong yuta, ihatag ato ng paliton, kaya akong tukuran ang altar alang sa Diyos, ang templo alang sa Diyos. Kining mga tao naging Doon ni David, makurat siya ng ayaw na ang iyong hari ng hangyo ka niya. So may yun ni mong taong dato nga, mangari, kalipay na kung makaalagad ka niyo, kuhaa ang tanani mong gusto, at ang yuta, huwag niya pa po yung mga binuhi ng mga hayo, ako rin ihatag ka niyo alam sa paghalag sa ato ang buhay ka Diyos. Niya, niya po tayo ng famous na lahat ni David. Tingnan siya. I will not offer anything to the Lord that cost me nothing. After his mistakes, after his failure, after he found out na doon na siya ay garbo sunod sa kasing-kasing na Nakasalat siya sa Diyos. What David does, he come to the Lord and built an altar before the Lord. I'm asking you, victorious life, or in fact, Philippines, if we commit mistakes to the Lord, if we commit mistakes to the Lord, if we somehow offended God, let's come before Him and ask forgiveness. And after that, let's build our altar. Let's build our relationship to the Lord. Let's offer ourselves and even our mistakes to the Lord and burn it out in the feet of Jesus as our redemption. And let's come to Him and experience Him because in Him we have a total forgiveness. I pray that the Lord will speak to you this morning. I pray that the Lord will come to minister to you this morning. As we hear music, as we worship the Lord, let's pause for a while and meditate 
the goodness of God in our life. Let's close for a sweet listen song, worship song. Let me pray for you. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning, for reminding us of your word that God, whatever circumstances we across with, whether it's defeat nor victories, I pray that your name will be glorified, not ourselves, not our accomplishment, Lord, not my pride, you but your glory. I pray as we experience significant victory that your name will be lifted up. God, even those hurting moments, God, I pray that your name will be glorified. That every day of our lives, Lord, ada na namo sa among kinabuhi, sa paghimo kami of major decisions, Lord, dili na mo tuyukun sa pagsupak ang imo mga Kung labi natin mong mga kabubuton, ngayon mo nang ipadayag daan sa inyong kasulatan. At kung nagampong din mo kami ngayon ko nun, na kung maghibaw kami major decisions, Lord, we will not rely on our resources. We will not rely on our understanding. But in all our ways, we will acknowledge you so that you can lead our path. God, whenever we commit mistake, bring us back to the communion. Bring us back to that. Faith of Jesus. And help us to recognize God that apart from you, we can do nothing. I pray that every significant success for every down moment of our life, we can honor you and we can praise you. Bless every one of us this morning, through his life church, and the rest of the viewers. May the grace of God be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Happy Sunday.